Hey there guys, welcome back to the Caddy Daddy and Bop Parts Garage. Today we're going to be rebuilding this uh, air ride leveling valve. <clears throat> what this valve does is it maintains enough pressure in, in the uh, air spring or the air bag to keep the car level. So if the car is heavily laden, it emits air to the bag, then when you take that heavy load out of the trunk, it releases air from the bag to lower the car back down. So. The uh, basic parts of this is you have the, the arm that's connected to the suspension. This bracket is connected to the frame of the car. This is a line that goes to the <clears throat> to the air spring. This is the exhaust and this is the intake. There's a, a check valve in here so that if the intake if, you, if the uh, intake line gets ruptured that it can't leak all the air out and cause the car to drop and this is the exhaust side and it has a restriction in case something internally fails to keep it from um, dropping, dr dropping the car quickly. If something fails it makes the car drop slowly. Uh, the new our rebuild kit <coughs> does things a little bit differently. There's a the Schrader valve in here has a restriction so this is straight through and we have a new check valve that's slightly shorter and then we use the original valve here. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take and remove these fittings. Get them out of the way. Now these, um, sometimes these can be cleaned. Put them in the ultrasonic machine, clean them and you can reuse them. Uh, we're definitely going to reuse this fitting, but these other two we're not. And we're going to put new adapters to the copper lines using the adapters here. We get the valves out of the way, or the fittings out of the way, then we can start disassembling the um, lever. We need to pull the lever off. And in our kit, I'll show you because we always are careful not to destroy parts. Unless we know we got the replacement. So we have the lever, the spring, plunger, and cover, and clip. So we have all the, this is the seal that goes inside. So you can see we have, and there's going to be some extra parts because these kits are actually um, applied to many applications. Uh, including some non-automotive ones, some that are used in trailers. So we know we have these parts so we don't have to worry about like getting this clip off of here. We don't have to save this clip. And they're rusted and they usually break anyway. We get the arm off and this is the adjusting screw. This part of the calibration adjustment will be done when we're actually mounting these on the car in the future. So this is these are parts that we're going to clean up. That's the part we're going to clean up. These are parts we're going to just save in case we might want them someday. That, that screw gets saved. And now what we have to do is, as you saw in here, this is nice, I can show you. There's a spring and a plunger and that all fits in here. What we have to do is we have to push down on the edge of that plunger so that we can pull the plastic housing off the shaft. If I rotate this around you can see that that shaft has a flat. The plunger goes into that flat. So if we rotate it around there's the nut that goes with that screw. If we rotate that around and we, we can kinda pry it off like that. And that spring is pretty tough. And we just sent the plunger flying. So let that be a warning to you. There's the, the tool that's for disassembling this is unavailable. Um, so it's, it's one of those difficult things that you can't do. There's no way to do it the right way unless you have the tool. So this is more parts that we are not going to be using. Because we have all brand new. Now we take the cover off the bottom. Now the cover is not only the mounting bracket, 
it is the cover for the mechanism inside. And our kit even comes with new screws for this. In this bag that's internal parts. So our kit comes with a, with a lot of little miscellaneous things and give this a little tap. So there's the bracket. There's the rubber gasket. Oh, lovely. That's why the cars don't go up and down automatically anymore. We'll take this bracket off. I don't recall if they give us this screw or not, so I'm going to put this screw in the key in the cleanup pile. Now this is a real mess in there. Wow. <laughs> and this one looked pretty good from the outside. You never know what you're going to get. They give us a new one of those screws. Plastic keeper. This is all just corroded into this housing. I'm going to get a pair of pliers and there's real no good way to take it apart but we do have the parts. The part we need to save is this shaft and not damage the housing. Whatever we do to get it out, we do. After the application of a little ultraviolence, we got the piece pulled out. The um, shaft uh, comes out. It's not worn. So actually as bad as that is, it's a, we can salvage the unit. The housing, the corrosion's not that bad. It was just this part got rusty and kind of swelled up in there. So this side here, we have the Schrader valve. And then we have this little clip. Put that in that pile. That can go in that pile. Got these loosened. And notice this Schrader valve is designed to be pulled open. How light the spring is. That's so that when the it's in the airlift mode, this can be blown open by the air. Uh, Schrader valves can be used as check valves. In fact, if you look in their catalog, it's quite interesting to see how many different varieties there are. We're just used to seeing these in our valve stems and, and uh, air conditioning. So now we got the housing. This housing looks perfectly good. So, got everything apart. Everything's going to go in the ultrasonic, get cleaned up. And next time I see you guys, we'll be putting everything back together again. See you later. At Caddy Daddy Presents, it's all about giving back. Please enjoy the video of the Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Helena and Calistoga.